It is my absolute joy and pleasure to introduce Rory Duff. Um, I'm so looking forward to this conversation, which frankly is, is long overdue because I was introduced to Rory's work by um, someone who watches my videos around about six years ago, I think, Rory. And I came on one of your dowsing courses and one of your seminars, and I've joined your group meditations, et cetera. So, you know, I really followed your work avidly and often talked about it in, in previous videos because I'm, I am just so... Um, in awe of the work you're doing. It truly is groundbreaking. I don't know anybody else who's working in this field as you are. So, you know, thank you for all that you're contributing. Um, we're all playing a, you know, a part and you are playing a massive part um, in these huge times of transition. So many of you will be familiar with Rory because you'll have chased up his work um, when I mentioned him previously. But for those of you who aren't familiar with his work, just a little bit of background. Um, he began his working life as a geologist in the gold mines in Africa, and I think that's where you learned to douse, Rory, wasn't it, initially? And then having been inspired by the work of Steiner, um, you then started to pursue a different career in geobiology, which is really, I think, quite a new modality, geobiology, which is the study of how the earth affects life. This fascinates me because your work really proves the interconnectedness of all things, humans, earth, galaxy, etc. That's just wonderful. And you really are one of the leading pioneers in the world in, to, in your understanding of ley lines and earth energies and how their frequencies can either swing from highly beneficial to even dangerous for people to live on. And you came up with the first ever classification of earth energies, which is now used by thousands of people around the world. And you've mapped more of those lines around the world than anyone else by a long way. And that is absolutely true. You're also the first person to rediscover the powerful lines in the world called the Emperor Dragons, and they're only six pairs and one pair runs across the US. Those are super powerful lines. And in your talks, etc., you often talk, you, you often share with people how they have a powerful effect on mankind too. And we might dig into that in, in this conversation. You're also the first person to have ever offered up a viable scientific hypothesis as to what these energies are and how they're generated within the earth and how this links with the universal consciousness, something else that fascinates me. So your mission now is really to raise awareness of the main energy lines on the earth and to help people to gather at sacred sites, certainly in the UK, four times a year for meditations. Um, and these are harmony times when all the earth's energies move at the same frequency. And you believe that group prayer and meditation on those harmony times is intimately linked with the rise of the divine feminine and a coming rebalancing. And you sense that perhaps the one and only thing left for humanity in order to overcome the problems in the world, which when we succeed will allow us to usher in a new golden age, is really doing that um, prayer and meditation at these sacred sites. And so huge respect for your, your work. I love the way it kind of helps to validate astrology, actually, but really does give evidence to the interconnectedness of all things. And so I don't know anyone else who's working in this field. So uh, respect. <laughs> well, thank you very much for that uh, wonderful introduction, Pamela. And I have to say I'm in, in awe of your own work and what you've achieved in your life and more importantly over the last few years too. It's, uh, it, it, and and it's, it is really an interesting uh, subject to connect with uh, geobiology as well. And I'm fascinated by seeing how that develops even further. I mean, we hopefully we'll touch on that uh, today. Um, but there's a lot to offer, but the interconnectedness of all things that you mentioned is, is, uh, is rooted at the very universal uh, aspect of, of consciousness, which is vibration. And, and uh, probably we, it would be too deep to go into that today. But, but that I have to say that for all those wonderful things you said about my, my work, as a lot of my work is actually on the back of giants in the past that I've studied with, that I've learned from, and I've been brought to my attention. And uh, Steiner, you mentioned one. I've been researching Jung for, for many years now and, and his red book, and that links with, with geobiology quite dramatically. 
and an old dear friend of mine, Ron Pearson, who, who, who actually is the linchpin behind everything because his theory of quantum gravity is the only scientific theory that even begins to come close to explaining intelligence behind the universe and how the mind survives after death. And, and that, no one's found any flaws in that. And it, 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 it's the basis behind everything we, we think about, like astrology, healing, uh, uh, survival, and, and uh, really the true nature of reality in this world. So. And, and I also have to mention to everyone that, that uh, Rory has a free epic monthly newsletter <laughs> <laughs> that just has so much information. It, you know, you have to sit down with a, a large glass of wine or cup of tea to get through that. It's, it, it's absolutely spectacular. So I'd really recommend that people um, follow his newsletters too. So, so where I, have to, I have to say, uh, Pam, you actually feature in this next one. Oh, wow. The May, the May okay. edition. Okay. Uh, you, you, you are part of a synchronicity. Oh, that's wonderful to hear. You, you put a you put a, a, a post up on the seventeenth of March, which just drew me at thought because this this was a second a causal event, and uh, it was by a lady uh, Catherine Watkins, and it was to do with uh, science uh, studies in, in a university in Germany, with light being emitted from a meditator. Ah, yes, and, yes, yes. And I just thought I need to just explore this, and I ended up finding. Uh, the meditator and his website and his books and they begin to all connect with this heart resonance theme um so thank thank you for that just, oh, just, just wow. to... completely unaware but no wonderful wonderful how you know we're, we're all connecting in so many ways fantastic i look forward to that so where should we begin um rory is it the do you want to share with the the listeners about the drop the significant drop in the suns and the earth's magnetic shield and the effect that that's having on the energy lines of the earth i think that's that's probably the, the best place to start from, from this this point uh, because that really kind of galvanized a lot of people into action uh, and it, it started around uh, the middle of 2017 when suddenly all the energy lines doubled in their width. And I just just put a note out to some to key people that I knew who could check these things without mentioning what had been going on. And they all came back and said, what's going on? The energy lines are all doubled. And um, from that moment, we were well, we knew the energies were dynamic and we knew they were, were high pressure concentrations. Well, the idea is that high pressure concentrations from very, very low frequency vibrations stemming from the slow expansion and contraction of the inner core of our Earth, uh, which is solid in the liquid outer core, which is like a beating heart of the Earth, but it's pumping out these vibrations. And vibrations are the, are the heart of everything. It's what, what Tesla talks about as being the vibration is fundamental to it all. But what my colleague uh, and good friend Ron Pearson had to discovered was that it's at the sub quantum level of existence you get these vibrations which when they interact with wave, waves of inter interaction they create spikes of energy on the larger quantum world and this leads to all the different matter frequency worlds um, and be because of this interaction uh, the basis of uh, intelligence was created at this sub quantum level so vibration and universal consciousness from then on were intimately uh, linked. Um, so when you get uh, something happening with these vibrations, there's this some connection with consciousness as well as uh, what we were witnessing. Um, and we already knew from the intersections of these, these uh, vibrations we, that we found ancient and modern places of prayer like uh, cathedrals as well as you know, stone circles. But the energy lines had, had suddenly started to do something different. And with investigations, we found that uh, three more of the largest emperor dragons had arrived uh, over the next six months. These uh, we'd already figured out had to have come from a source of energy from outside of our solar system. And this meant that if more had managed to arrive, that meant more cosmic energy had come through to the earth. And that begged the question, well, how on earth has suddenly more cosmic energy got come through? And it wasn't long before it was fairly obvious that uh, our magnetic field, the earth's magnetic field was changing. 
this is something which is very rarely talked about now. It's got sort of dramatic consequences. But essentially, um, because we also got to look at the science behind this, and that's actually still uh, controversial. But the, the magnetic field uh, in Antarctica, the southern magnetic pole has already left Antarctica. It's heading upwards towards the uh, uh, Indian Ocean. And the north magnetic pole, uh, which used to be for many years over Canada is now heading across the, to the Russian coast and, and it's going to, these, these north and south poles are going to meet um, or they're going to reverse. But either way, every 6,000 or 12,000 years, you get this uh, uh, change in the Earth's magnetic field. And this is now we're fairly certain linked to something called the galactic uh, current sheet. Um, it's slightly controversial because mainstream science does not like to think of the universe as being an electric universe. But we do know the sun has a, a heliospheric current sheet and the earth passes through it uh, every eight to 10 days. It's a sort of up and down wavy electric sheet with a bit of plasma, a bit of cosmic energy. And, and, and uh, we pass through it every eight to 10 days. And that's at our distance from, from the sun. And it takes about two minutes to pass through. And the sun is very much based on, uh, on uh, plasma electricity. It's certainly not what they call the, the standard fusion model where there's lots of nuclear explosions going off in the middle all the time. And it's, uh, but, so we're living in a more of uh, a universe which is explained far better by a, a new subject called plasma, plasma cosmology. And they recognize that our galaxy, the Milky Way galaxy, with, uh, which has a central part near Sagittarius A or B, I forget which, that too has a wavy electric sheet, but it's on a much, much bigger scale. And from studies and observations, they've begun to realize that the solar system that we're in moves through the galactic current sheet roughly every 12,000 years. And I say roughly because the, the shape of the sine wave of the current sheet, if you like, depends on where you're passing through. If you pass through the peaks, it can be slightly shorter. If you pass near the center, the interval will be slightly longer. And we find that exactly happening with the Earth as it passes through the sun's current sheet. But it doesn't take you know, a few minutes for the solar system to go through the galactic current sheet. It takes over 200 years. And when that happens, a lot of physical things happen to us. A lot of mental things and emotional things happen to it, but also uh, it changes uh, our consciousness as well. And that perhaps needs a bit more explanation, but uh, uh, the current sheet has, as I said, plasma, it's got cosmic energy and it's got uh, dust. Well, the, the plasma, as we get near to this, it has an electric field. It's that field which is changing the actual field of the earth magnetic field. So that's why our, our magnetic field is, is reducing. And uh, it looks like it's either going to go for a full tilt reversal, which happens every two or 300,000 years on Earth, or it's going to go halfway and then go back again. And we, we know roughly how this works because we see the same thing happening on the sun. The sun has a north and south magnetic pole, which again changes every 11 years. So we can see the north pole meets the south pole, another pole comes the other side and it continues its full reversal. So we're not quite sure whether we're gonna have a full reversal or not this time, but we do know the magnetic field's lowering. And, and the big effect there, that means is ele that electrical electromagnetic field actually is a barrier to cosmic energy. So when that goes down, more cosmic energy gets through. When that hits our, our atmosphere, it converts to neutrinos and gamma ray radiation. And, and that's why a lot of the problems in some parts of the world are gamma ray radiation, like in Brazil, because there's a, a very much a magnetic low anomaly over there. They're getting a lot of extra radiation. But uh, the neutrinos are providing the energy to the inner core, and that's what's now suddenly giving us more uh, energy from the galaxy. So it's a bit like uh, we had three suns on a cloudy day. You could see the three suns. With the clouds going away, uh, we can now see six suns. And it's like six uh, aspects of, of uh, sources of, of these uh, cosmic rays are now coming through. And cosmic rays we know are evolutionary. 
they mutate and they can kill cells. And we look back in our past and we know that big, large evolutionary events are linked to increases in cosmic energy. And even right now, um, there are changes going on, um, physical changes in our solar system. We find uh, uh, planets like Saturn, for instance, the storms come 10 years early. Uh, temperature changes on, on, on uh, Mars have increased and decreased faster than on Earth. So there's a lot of things happening because of this in oncoming galactic current sheet. But uh, for me, what I find interesting is, is this 12,000, roughly 12,000 year cycle is now linked to quite a lot of similar cycles, like the Yugas, like the Stider's epochs, like the precession of the equinoxes and, and, and the movement, if you like, of, of, of mankind with different aspects of the constellations in the sky. And all the old traditional uh, uh, legends or stories or, or things that are told by word of mouth seem to indicate that uh, mankind goes through a fairly big change every 12,000 years. And Steiner, for instance, talked about moving from individual consciousness to group consciousness and then back again to group to individual consciousness again. And it's looking like we are moving into a period of group consciousness. And for that, we need to be prepared just just knowing about that and, and knowing why we're thinking what we're thinking is is increasingly important and then you and you'll probably know that around the world there's huge increases in mental ill health people are, are reporting uh their observations to doctors and, and the doctors and, and, the, and psychologists and psychiatrists haven't got a clue why people are thinking and reporting these things but it's happening i mean i i, I get people talk uh, contacting me and, and 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 sharing times when uh, suddenly they think they're awake but they're in a dream you know and and they're seeing things that they would normally associate with seeing in a dreams and yet they're yet they're walking down the street and it suddenly becomes so what's going on you know and, and there are explanations but mainstream can't do that Yes, it's. I mean, it's just there's so much going through my head as you as you talk, Rory, because um, the planet Uranus is very highlighted um, this year, and uh, in fact, really till mid next year. And Uranus is a very unstable energy. It's to do with awakening. It's to do with the galactics. It's to do with higher mind. It's to do with that bolt of lightning. You know, whether it's an earthquake, a volcano, a sudden erupt of energy, a coronal mass ejection, etc. On on Earth or whether you have an enlightenment experience, a Kundalini experience, or whether you become psychotic, it's still Uranus because it's very destabilizing. And that is being very highlighted by the position of the nodal axis, um, certainly until July next year. And I, I think simply um, with the energetic stresses as well, and all that we're going through in our 3D reality, that is tipping a lot of people into the shadow side of Uranus in, in how they're expressing it. But it was so interesting what you're talking about with the drop in the magnetic shield. Again, this is all Uranus, you know, the coronal mass ejections, the, the geomagnetic instability is very connected to Uranus. But I was listening to a cosmologist um, about a month ago, and it's so interesting in terms of what you're saying, because she said in 2018, we had 26 coronal mass ejections. It's predicted this year we are going to have up to a thousand plus a whole spate of M-class and X-class flares, which is what we're in the midst of at the moment, super powerful because of the drops in the magnetic shields. And so everything is kind of heating up um, and becoming kind of wilder and wilder to tip us into a, a massive evolutionary phase, I think. Rory, how soon do you see that either the meeting of the poles and a pole reversal or, or a backing off once they meet? Do you see that within a, a year, a decade, or longer than that? Do you have any estimate on that? Um, the, one of the problems we're getting is that there's suddenly become a, a, a lack of reporting in uh, in some of these actual physical observations so we can only begin to sort of extrapolate by looking at the speed with which the things are happening um, that that actually perhaps will only tell us when a, a reversal may or may not take place and I don't think we're here just yet what we 
what we don't quite know, and, and there's a bit of a dispute on, is with regards to when we started entering this uh, current sheet. Some people think we've been in it for 50 years or so. And, and personally, I think we've, we've only just started going through the transition zone on the 17th. So the, the, the 2017, I think we're fully entering in, in 2024. And I'll come to why in, in a moment, but, but I don't actually see that as being uh, physically a problem at the moment. There is a, a looming problem on the horizon. It's a, in the middle of this galactic current sheet, it's a reversal zone. It's where uh, the sort of positive and negative charged plasmas uh, switch. And that reversal zone's probably going to be, a, 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 will have a width to it that'll mean that we, we get close to that in maybe 60, 50, 60 years' time. Um, that may be the point when the poles finally slip switch over I'm, I'm not totally sure on that if that, if that is the case um, however I do think uh, nature has a way of and and the universal consciousness would would, would would obviously be driving us would not want to wipe mankind off the face of the earth that Great. just doesn't make sense in any kind of uh, plan uh, but I do think what it does is destabilize and, and you mentioned Uranus before, and, and I'm sure the other planets, they're all going through physical changes, which yeah. must mean all those physical changes are, again, affecting us in different ways, mentally and emotionally. So it's not just the, the positions of them, it, it, of these planets and where they are. There's something deeper set than that, uh, that uh, is, is going to be affecting us mentally and emotionally and by default, spiritually. And, and that whole, well, if I can liken it to, to what Steiner talks about, it's like going through the abyss uh, where, where we're challenged, our weaknesses are challenged to make us stronger. So everything that's happening right now in the world is, is designed to help us make, become stronger. And if we keep thinking of that, we can survive this. So it's, it's just getting away from the victim mentality and explaining to other people, look, this is happening. You're going to get this but don't worry because this is part of our challenge. And um, one of the things that I'm, 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 I'm trying to, to teach people is the importance of, of becoming a prophet, which sounds rather strange, but this is, this is something we, we can all very easily do just by recording our dreams. Because once you've accepted that there's a universal intelligence that, that, that creates everything in the universe, uh, that then means that information about near-term events is possible to understand how uh, how that can happen. It's also possible to now to understand uh, information about long-term cyclic events, like going through the galactic current sheet. And we pick up signs collectively, uh, and we can we can check with one another. If we if, if you're a member of a dream group, you, it's amazing how uh, a, a group will all have similar dreams or uh, connections to something like that. And um, that will tell us in the next uh, day or two, sometimes what we see, what we come across, uh, but more importantly, uh, it will help us connect in a way that makes us know we're not going mad. <laughs> That's a huge relief to people. Uh, and one of, the, one of the questions I wanted to put to you was, was whether or not you felt astrology could help us work out uh, when were the good times for whatever type of person that there were to be able to actually, you know, we must, we must really come together with, with meditation at these times uh, or come together for dreams, with dream groups at these times, because if more of us became prophets and shared that information, we'll be more forewarned about what's coming. Yeah, and, absolutely. I mean, certainly equinoxes and solstices, which you, um, you organized wonderful group meditations um, at those times, and we'll talk about that in a moment, but also, just very simply every every month the three and a half days running into the new moon just before the new moon is a much more psychic time because the veils are thinner and people tend to report that um they get more information in their dreams then other times are when um we have a super moon when the moon is physically very very close in its orbit to the earth that's another key time but also with this uranus being so highlighted that's you know, like this sort of electrical download that people can get. And for instance, this coming um, solar eclipse on the 30th of April, that is conjunct Uranus. 
And so we are more likely to get some kind of, you know, boom, electromagnetic download than we would otherwise. There's another one later in the year. Um, I think it's November. Um, let me just check when that's conjunct um, Uranus. Yes, 8th of November. Midterm elections in the US, I think. That's going to be an interesting day. That is, um, that is also conjunct Uranus that day. So when we have that very high frequency galactic energy that is very close to the north node of the moon, then that's another key time for downloads. But it, it eventually comes down to the minutiae of every single person's chart, particularly where they have their natal moon and whether the natal moon is being triggered at these times as well. And that becomes a very individual study, of course. I can't make more statements about that, but. What would be wonderful is if we, can, if we could bring groups of people together who have similar, similar charts that, that could work well together and, 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 and sort of bounce off each other's uh, input. And I, that's kind of what I'm hoping to do and go with the, the sacred network that you, know, you kindly mentioned earlier as well, because it's about forming groups where like-minded people from around the world can connect up and share experiences and observations with a view to uh, being able to shed further light on these transformational changes and, and, and coming back to the transformational changes. You mentioned the veils coming down uh, just before the, the new moon and the full moon. This is this veils coming down is very much tied up with the universal prophecy and, and where we're going with all of this. So it's quite possible that this period will extend of the veils coming down. In fact, Jung had a, had a, a part of a universal prophecy when he, 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 he also was shown the veils of the worlds coming down uh, and that'd be a union of all humanities, uh, is what, what he writes about. And, and when you start beginning to think actually just what is ahead of us, you know, uh, um, could be about this uh, total interconnectedness of all the worlds. And if they're all worlds diff on different matter frequencies and, and, and it's just our minds that are perceiving these uh, and, and we're tuning into our own matter frequency system, if this cosmic energy really takes hold, which I'm quite certain it will, then we, we're suddenly going to find this ability to tune into other matter frequency systems. And the real trick now is going to be whether we can do it at will or whether it's done for us. <laughs> I suspect that's where the learning curve for most of us now is to, to begin to, well, what do we have to do to prepare so that we can retain some sort of degree of, 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 of ability to live and work and help others in this new and energetic environment? Um, so, yeah, we, we, we have work to do. I think we have time. Coming back to that, that, that question you asked about how long do we have, Probably 20, 30 years, I think, before, before, before we, and by that stage, we'll be well into uh, understanding just what we need to do, how we need to work in groups, and, and, and how our minds are changing. Uh, but in the meantime, we, we are navigating the abyss, I think, is nothing better, which is, which is with a zone of extreme madness. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I think this year is the most intense of the lot. You know, if I'm looking at it astrologically, I think it's the most intense, and we are going to see massive disclosure, which is, as you will know, Rory fire hosing out on alternative uh, channels, but of course not yet on mainstream channels. But I think once people become more aware of the abyss, let's call it, of the darkness, um, that potentially can add to the, the mental instability because it's just it's just going to be enormous but I, th I think it's a huge huge year of disclosure I think even May mm -hmm. we've got a total lunar eclipse 15th 16th of May that I think is going to be gigantic for um, revealing a lot of, uh, of things and that has to happen I think we have to be aware of the dark before we can step into the light more fully but I think we are all being in a way that we probably can't quite yet define. We're all becoming new humans in the most natural, organic way. That's where we're headed, because together with these um, unstable geomagnetics and, uh, and all the solar flares we're having, plus this photonic energy and light, we are being upgraded in every moment, whether we like it or not. And so we're shifting towards you know, more chakras, 
being opened in our system, um, greater sense of connection, greater connection to the whole galaxy. And that's where we're headed. And I think we'll develop new abilities, telepathy, healing, um, really seeing the whole world as, as, as in brilliant colors and telepathy mm -hmm. with animals, plants, mosses, snails, and all of it. And, and that will be thrilling because it will be such a new experience for us. But we've got to go through some murk before we get to that point. And we're all going to be at different points on that. You know, I often mm. use the analogy of going to Heathrow Airport and some people have got on the, on the fast the fast track um, and others have taken the slower road, but we're all going to get to the same destination ultimately. We are, but I think it has to happen from from a certain thing that we have to start doing. And that one, one of the things which, uh, funnily enough, the article that uh, you led me to, uh, that synchronicity I mentioned earlier, was, was to do with the studies on this person who was meditating with regards to how much light and photons were being emitted from his, from his body. Uh, and there was a particular moment in time which the emittance of these photons just leapt off the scale. And it was linked absolutely to the point where heart resonance was linked to another person's heart resonance. And, and this brings us back to vibration and the need to, to, to actually have an object or a person or, or, like, or an animal or two animals where their hearts have come into synchronization. Yeah. And as soon as you get together in groups and you manage that to create that, uh, uh, what, what uh, uh, Roland McCrathy from the Heart Math Institute calls uh, a social coherence, which is heart rate uh, coherence amongst a community, there there is a leap forward in, in in awareness and learning that you you register at a higher level, and if you keep doing that, then that's where the growth comes. So when when we get together in groups and meditate, it has this sort of progressive effect of spreading to other people. So we don't need. For instance, I, I talk about some of the five percent of us at the moment. We'll grow to the thirty percent, mm. and that thirty percent will just be like that. The rest of the world will get it. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Downward causation, law of physics. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Because Rory, you also said in the past in your work that um, originally with solstices and equinoxes, it was the day before those four points in the year when the Earth's energy lines came into harmony, that you've observed that that day has spread now to, is it 14 days now of harmony? It was last time. It's probably going to be 15, 16 days for, for the summer one uh, coming up. Um, uh, and what we're, we're seeing is that it's slowly getting uh, a longer and longer period of time. And you can begin to project that uh, every quarter, uh, an increasing length of time. To, and that's when we, we figured that December in 2024, that winter solstice harmony time is likely to be 96, 97 days long. That, of course, means that it's all year round. <laughs> that's just one frequency, one vibration. Um, and, and as I said, if you don't look to tune into it, you'll probably not notice any difference at all. But when you do tune into it and, and you, you, you find your heartbeat, for instance, is, is, is an octave of, of the higher, higher harmonic octave of exactly the same frequency as that, then, then there's resonance that can build up. And then you get the drumming and the movement and, and everyone else is doing the same thing. And suddenly you've got this uh, sort of infinite vibration uh, going on in every cell of your body. And, and at that point is when you begin to realize the learning and growing and developing is just starting yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know we, we we're just getting glimpses right now of what we need to do um but we need to share those glimpses and, and help others get through the abyss and i think probably for me the abyss we're across the abyss by the 24th uh the, the 2024 yeah and 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 that's the period you say will last for 200 years of peace 200 years of harmony lines you believe <laughs> Well, yes, and, and, and not quite. I'll tell you why, because we, we think that there's one particular type of energy line that's affected when the, when the Earth passes through the, the sun's current sheet. We, I call them the type three lines, because every eight to 10 days, the type three lines all come into harmony. And it's exactly the same eight to 10 days as when we get that electric pulse when the Earth goes through the current sheet. The thing is, we, we take two minutes as the earth to pass through, but the harmony time lasts for two days. Yeah. 
it's like the, the, the central bell of our earth has been struck mm. in those two minutes, but the sound continues. Okay, so, so we could be in a situation where we're gonna go through this 200 years and our inner bell, if you like, has been hit so hard, we're gonna, con that's gonna continue ringing for maybe another hundred or so years. And this raises an interesting point because uh, there's, there's, a, there's a talk that the Yugas, uh, this, which was first mentioned in the Rig Veda, and they never really knew, there was no time for how long a Yuga was. And we, we've had people put years, 12,000 years on it and ascending cycles and descending cycles. But in between the Yugas, there's a thing called the yoke. And the yoke has been said to be every 200 or 300 years. So that's almost like if you added all the yokes up and the two sequences of 12,000 years, you're pretty close to the time it takes for the full procession of the equinoxes of 25,800 years or so. Mm -hmm. So you're, you're beginning to see how uh, all of these things can, can, can match up. So I, 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 would, I would guess that the harmony time with, with, this, uh, with this galactic current sheet could be you know, three or 400 years easily. And that, that's when there's talk of golden ages in you know, the new Jerusalem's coming. Uh, all the universal prophecies point to this time as though, well, we're not gonna avoid it. And I don't think we're ever gonna avoid it. We're not, no one's gonna be able to stop this. Mm -hmm. But the big thing is how we cope. Yeah. And it's either we're gonna be someone who just exists in this, or we're going to be someone who can actually do something to help others in that time. Yeah. <clears throat> and yeah. Sina talks about that we need to discover our spiritual self and, and the learning starts now. Yeah. As you say, you know, the ascension, the evolution of humanity is unstoppable. You know, the, the photonic light is going to keep on coming. That's unstoppable because it's a frequency. So, yeah. So therefore, you see the Earth potentially could go through a much more peaceful phase from December 2024. If that's the case. That's going to start at that yeah. point. I think there'll be pockets of people who, who who still wish to retain hold of their power and control. But one of the things which is which is becoming very obvious right now is is the dichotomy of lies and truth, and how the truth just has to sit more and more. And see, people who are awakening up, they can't even. They try so much harder to say things in in a way which is precise because they don't want to mislead. It's, it's kind of like you, you, you don't want anything to do with lies. It's all about the truth because that's that's the heart center, whereas the lies can exist in the mind. Yep. They can't exist in the heart, and it's moving down to that heart. But there'll be still people who are trying to lie still. But what's happening when this is what's quite strange is that the empathic side of us is growing. So you can feel the lies, you know, even in their minds. And, and it, it gets to the point when, these liars, uh, they know then they're, they're not being believed, but they still keep keep doing it. And, and yet more and more of us know and know and know. So we'll still be left with a few people that are, are, are trying to do what they want to do. And, and of course, if they've got the money and the power, uh, they can cause quite, quite a lot of issues for the rest of us. But, but uh, if, if, we, if we all come together and recognize this potential, then, then we have a very bright future. Yeah. Yeah, it's so interesting as well, because Uranus is the plant of truth. It's the piercing sword of clarity. Uh -huh. of truth. So it's so interesting. And also it's the planet linked to collaboration, community, coming together with people of like mind. And that's where we, you know, the power of the people is really where we're moving to. But it's so interesting. December 2024 is when Pluto finally leaves Capricorn, having demolished or revealed any corruption in top-down structures of government, corporations, institutions that are not for, our, not for our highest good. It will reveal a lot of dirty laundry in that time. And then December 2024, it moves into Aquarius, which is the sign of the power of the people until 2044, a very long time. And it is then starting a very positive aspect to Uranus. It's had some super challenging aspects to Uranus in the past from 2008 with the financial crash through to 2015. You know, so it's been some tough stuff on the 3D level, but it is moving into a, a much more beautiful aspect to Uranus for quite some time. And it's interesting that that begins, end of 2024 begins, a series of outer planet 
changes of sign, Saturn, Neptune, etc. So there's a whole shift of age, if you like, a shift of energy, very much away from, um, from earth and water into air and fire. So everything's going to get faster, everything's about communication, but it could also open us up to the galactics in, in a much, you know, we step into becoming galactic citizens or remember that we're galactic citizens in a much, much bigger way. So that the astrology is, is backing up what you, that's what's so wonderful about this. The astrology is supporting what you are seeing with, with your work, Rory. Well, well, I mean, I was just thinking that, that, that the grand design of the universal consciousness is what supports all this. It's like it, it's driving all of these things. And that's why it begins to look like it's more connected. And it, 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 it's almost like a game of chess where, you know, it, it knows it's going to move Uranus into this position and then Aquarius is going to follow in this position. It's like where, where our minds are just like pawns in this game. Uh, of, of of progress of, of growth of, of understanding that the universal consciousness has set for us uh, and um we can go into reasons more but it, it, it is very much a part of some kind of great grand design i think which and i think the fact that we're discovering the connections in geobiology and astrology and, and, and many other subjects as well is really quite exciting Oh, absolutely, because everything is really starting to connect in a way that we just didn't have the knowledge or not in recent recent recorded history that we've had the knowledge to do before. So it really is, you know, this is the opportunity of at least 12,000 years, isn't it, if not more? It is, but we've got to get rid of the lies. I mean, religions, for instance, so her, her, most people in religious communities are wonderful people, but the people at the top, they, think they just don't want you to know the spiritual side of religion and the inner spirituality. You look at science, they're... they're desperate to make us consider to keep relativity theory to keep that keeps the ether completely away from it i mean tesla hated relativity theory it was, it was totally wrong and yet when as soon as you start getting rid of the obfuscation and then you realize so for instance of course the mind survives after death we thought about that only the last few hundred years we ever thought that doesn't doesn't happen and as soon as you take the fear from you know dying away then that's a big chunk of fear off of your back, you know, and uh, that that a lot of people could do with that. Well, I so, think, yeah. I think the lies are going to get kind of wilder. Is there's a, a real sense of desperation at the moment yeah. to to keep control? And I think we're all well aware of that. Well, we could expect more lockdowns, uh, threats of aliens landing. Uh, <laughs> Any really a, big scary thing. Any really big scary thing. Yeah. Well, they've got the technology to make it look real. And, and to make people believe it, um, and we're probably going to be at a point where if we don't trust our hearts, mm. then we are in trouble mm. because it, 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 it's so outlandish and, it's, and, and you think, well, I can't possibly be wrong. You know, kind of, it has to be right. But now, to, how does it feel? Yeah. And if they can take that feeling away from us. And this is this is what I find interesting is, is where feeling is now. Where are our awareness centers in our body? because we need to start trusting them. And uh, so that's a little bit about um, where the newsletter is going this, this next. Oh, next month. Uh, you know, for me, it's so much within the heart. I think our hearts are expanding massively going through this phase and, uh, and it has to come back to the heart and to, and to love. Um, tell, us, tell us more, um, Rory, about the sacred network, because this sounds really fascinating for people. Yeah, it, thank you for that. Um, it's starting, uh, it started as, really um actually where can i really say it was the realization that there was nothing else we could do in the world but bring together people together in groups uh, but to to do that in a with a spiritual connection uh in a multi-faith way to unite to unite people from different uh, uh religions but to not change their ways and practices and cultures but the, there had to be places where this could this could be done and and sacred sites were obviously the, the way the way to go um but not many people knew where they were uh i i just happened to be mapping these uh very powerful lines the emperor dragons around the world and there are, there are six pairs of them and then uh the slightly less powerful ones the type four lines uh there are quite a few extra of those there's probably about a hundred of them in europe there's probably about a hundred 120 of them in America, and I've been literally 
mapping them over the last few years, trying to find where their intersections are and getting that information to local people uh, so that people can gather there and pray and meditate on these sacred sites. And, and, and what they're reporting is just phenomenal. Uh, the groups are just growing because people are realizing this. I mean, you, you know yourself what it put when we gathered in, in Wiltshire, we had 150 people last summer and it was just, just an amazing experience. But it, it, it's that way where the resonance begins to occur and spread. And uh, yeah, that's what we've got to do. And the Sacred Network is, is a site to, to help people form groups around sacred sites. It's good to show people where they are, how to book up and, and join them. Uh, and there's no payment involved for that. Uh, it's just to get people together in groups. And there's, there's uh, discussions uh, groups as well. So you can, for instance, have a, a, a dream group. Uh, and uh, you will get a meditation group or join people online for uh, for groups as well. It's just a vehicle for people to come together with, with an interconnectedness in a completely decentralized way. And and, and the beauty of synchronicity was one, 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 of, my, one of my friends, I did, didn't know what he did in his work, his work was at all, but he, he joins us on the meditations and, and uh, he heard I was looking to do the sacred network. He says, this is, uh, thank you, Will. Uh, and... Um, he said, oh, well, we can put it all on the decentralized blockchain. Uh, you know, my business will do that for you sort of thing. Really? So the whole website is going to be decentralized, totally encrypted. So anonymity is there if you want it. No one can find out what's being said or done unless you're a member. And uh, so I just love it where it all comes together. I get synchronicity going with the flow. So um, that, that's where we're at with it. Um, and there'll be a chance to... To, to build and grow the groups through discussions and, and having dialogue because the other the other big problem or problem opportunity we have is that, that we don't even know the right questions to ask when it comes to what we need to be doing to prepare we we, we, we don't sit back and do nothing Nature was never designed for us to sit back and do nothing we always have to work towards something and be shown the way but we do need to find the questions uh, and moving into group consciousness. Well, there's no playbook for that. <laughs> we have to actually work out what that means. And, and group consciousness is not this kind of like Borg like thinking, everyone thinking the same thing in any way at all. No, it, it, this is, this is being able to play your own unique individual part within a group. Yes, there's, there's telepathy, but there's, there's more than just telepathy. There's, there's an individual, individual functions and skills because group meditation is very different from individual meditation. We're beginning to find that when you're working with these energies, we each have talents or skills to, to be able to move them in certain ways that are necessary for a variety of functions. And the group begins to discover these. Uh, and these discussion forums is, uh, and dialogues are about finding how we're different and how we're the same. And it, it overcomes barriers and breaks, breaks people's uh, barriers. And for instance, uh, for a successful circle to, to work, there's always a, a loner type person but, uh, that doesn't, doesn't really want to be in a circle. <laughs> so, but, but when you've got that loner, after a, a few months, they, they're ready to join every time. You know, they've suddenly realized that they, their, their individuality is not actually in question. It's like, you know, that, that's a really big part of this. And, and the group begins to turn to the sort of experts and the skills. And, and gradually what happens is that the, the knowledge base is shared, which is really important. The knowledge about just all the clues we've been given, all the universal prophecies from Jung, from Goethe, from, from giants in the past, like Peter Dunoff. And, and, and sharing that information is like seeding our brain. And I explain what I mean by that. It's because uh, in, in, in uh, dowsing, we move, we move from a focused state to an aware state. It's a bit like building up a communication between the subconscious and the conscious. Uh, but to get that clarity of, of information, you need to have a way of understanding the information that's given to you back from the subconscious, from or whatever is giving you the information if you haven't if you've got a scrambled mind that doesn't really have a good grasp of reality or knowledge it's like you're 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 going into a morse code communication with someone who's french and doesn't know english and you're english and don't know any good french so you've got to learn french so that's so the french person can speak to you in morse code um, so we're seeding the brain if you like with all the necessary information so that when we do get information back we we don't freak out 
we can we can begin to formulate questions and continue with this dialogue and that's this this uh, uh, a full functional dialogue not just with the mind and mind but with the heart uh, with intuition and inspiration and suddenly this is what begins to help us move forward and learn develop and grow in the ways we need to it's so, so exciting because you're building a sort of spiritual collective unconscious within the groups, aren't you? And are, are they feed, all, they're all feeding back their, their dreams, their visions, their inspiration back to you as well, Rory? Well, the ones that I'm in, uh, we, we share, but the, the, at the moment, the, the, the functionality within this new site is such that you're going to be able to do keyword searches and, and messages to people. So you can join their groups and they can join yours. It's a decentralized network. So there's no top-down aspect to this in any way. Um, if we go with the flow, you'll find out what you're supposed to find out, but it becomes a vehicle with which people can connect and, and, and find a place um, to a greater or less extent, extent that they want. And, and, and in, in their own time, because I mean, the ultimate aim of this, if you like, is to not be needed as, as a sacred, as, as, a, as a network site. Once you've got communities that are growing, you know, and you've got you're, 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 you've got people coming around them, and you're you're it's self perpetuating, if you know what I mean. So, so you, you certainly don't need them. It's because suddenly we've seeded like thousands and thousands of these groups and communities around the world, and that's gonna, that's going to be what takes over for the next few hundred years. I mean, that's so incredibly exciting because you're helping people build their intuition, their telepathic abilities as well. And, you know, these are all skills that we're going to be moving into as, as the new normal, I think. But there's a big difference. See, I'm not teaching them anything. And that's what I learned about the energy lines. The energies teach us. Yeah, 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 yeah. I get that. Yeah. And then when you work an individual with an energy, all you do is you learn individual things about yourself. But as soon as you get a group working with the energy, the energy can teach the group. And, and that's what's so beautiful about it. I don't have to worry about it. <laughs> that, 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 uh, that, that'll just take care of itself. So that, that's, uh, yeah. <laughs> but there's a whole feedback loop in operation here that presumably it's helping to strengthen the energy of the sacred sites and make it more um, coherent in some way. There's a constant feedback loop between the people and the site. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what's, what's, what's good as well is you don't need to be on the site all the time. Wow. OK. Wow. You, you, we, we, I, I, there's a first order node in southeast of, of Spain, which I know, I know you, you, you well, next time we, we're going there, trying to, trying to go there, which is like when it opens up. But I've been running a meditation group with the, the people I took there over two years ago, and we get the same level of energy that we did when we were physically there. Wow, fantastic! Yeah. Just, and that's on site, you know. And when we, when we do meet, sorry, that's off site, but when we do meet. For instance, we took we took a, the group met up at uh, this place in Wiltshire, you know, and we spent two hours on on, on the node there, and we were we were having ridiculous things. I mean, like things we'd never experienced before. Right? We, we we with our eyes closed, we were moving in 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 uh, in uh, well, one one person was watching as the as the other six of us were moving in harmony with the energies, and it looked like there was a choreographed dance going on because the moves opposite each other were perfectly matched. Um, and then and then, yeah, there was there's more integration with nature, which was sort of fascinating. But, but it, it it's literally if you put yourself in the position. The energies in nature will teach you what we need to know. So the, the, if in, in many ways, the sacred network is about getting people to these sites so they can go on their own journey and the group's journey, because it is a path. It's a sacred path uh, and to these sites, just like a pilgrimage. Mm. And, and that's really what we need to do. We don't need to do much else. Because, this is really yeah. helping people to, to love the earth again, isn't it? To really find that profound connection with the earth, which has been so missing in our modern so-called sophisticated life. And, and everything to do with the earth and the universe. I mean, you know, this is the, the trees, the, the, the animals and uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's been a long journey as a geologist working with rocks to thinking that actually a rock can contain intelligence. <laughs> Uh, but when you start getting down to the tiniest level, 
at the sub-quantum level, you realize that this is in everything. And, and uh, that's a big journey, but, but life is about that, isn't it? It's about growing and developing and, and uh, it's fascinating. And, and as soon as we do that, we find that so many things are interconnecting and we've all got a role to play because of that, which is wonderful too. Yeah. Your work is really not only inspiring, but really beautiful, um, Rory, and really heart centred. And, and, you know, I really applaud you for what you're doing because you're just out there as a pioneer, you know, a lonely solo pioneer doing all of this work, but helping other people come along um, behind you. I'm not alone now. More people are doing it, thankfully. So, yeah, that, that's uh, like yourself, you're, you're, you're connecting up and, and uh, we're all going on this collective journey. And that's the really encouraging things that it's uh, it's something we're all doing together and that and that collectiveness is feeling greater and greater which is lovely yeah beautiful thank you so much rory for your time we're, we're at, um, pretty much at an hour now um and and people can find out about your work on ruryduff.com i'll put that underneath yep. the video yep and so you, yeah. work is all part of that uh, website at the moment too uh, information's on that yes uh, and and um thank you to everyone who who, who because we raised money and uh, we wanted to raise ten thousand pounds to to get the website off off the ground uh, and um we did we we reached fifteen thousand inside seven weeks which was just phenomenal uh so thank you very much to everyone who donated and, and you'll see the the fruits of that uh, soon um but uh, I, yeah so thank you very much Beautiful. So all of your work is there. You've written several books um, and, and, and really, again, groundbreaking books. Wonderful, wonderful information. So it really is a, a treasure trove. And, and just want to thank you so much for giving up your time, because um, I know your schedule is really crazy right now. So we feel very well, blessed. Well, Pam, I'm honoured to, to coming on your show as well. Thank you so much for asking me too, and, and, and I much appreciate that. Always a pleasure, and be sure to see you very soon on another meditation. Hopefully, some. Well, I do hope you come into the summer one, yeah, because it's the same place. And, okay, uh, fantastic! Definitely be there. Yep, no worries. Right. I will see you there. And there's another near one we, we know not far from you, I think, as well, which uh, which we've mentioned before. Okay. Um, ask Joe and, and Adrian. Ah, about. Nelton Church. Yes. Is that correct? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay, yes, I'm, I'm, yes, I've got a booking with them too, to be taken there. Wonderful. Fantastic. Wonderful. Bless you. Thank you so much, Rory. Oh. Really great. Thank you so much. Bye for now. Bye.